Um, thank you from everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Miguel Reguero. This is Rodrigo Núñez. Uh, we work for BBVA, the number one financial entity in Mexico and number two in Spain. We have over 65 million customers in 35 different countries. But more specifically, we work for iFirst, which is the, it's the company that creates uh, cybersecurity products for BBVA. Um, you should have seen our booth. It's right outside this room. But if you haven't, uh, come talk to us. Maybe if you're looking for a job, maybe we have it. So come chat us up. OK, before we start, let's talk about a little bit about us. Okay. We, have, we are a pretty big company, okay? And actually, uh, on top of having uh, around five data centers around the world, we have entire parts of, the, of a bank living in the cloud, in different cloud providers, with different accounts, and making all that stuff secure can be a pain in the ass. So, and we are not hackers, okay? Cybersecurity is not about that hacking, exploiting vulnerabilities, all that stuff. In fact, it's just a very small part of it. And, that, and all of the things is our work. Our job is to take care of everything else. The, the world is moving to a paradigm where continuous integration and continuous delivery is a must. And in this world, in this new world, or we, as the security guys, are uh, falling behind. Yeah, we are always slow, always stopping the, the development uh, uh, teams and such. So we need new tools to make this security faster. We are not stopping everyone, and then and be be there in every step of the development work, uh, cycle. So we create an application for that. So this is uh, Kira. Chimera, uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. focuses in three different points in the development life cycle. Okay. The first one, called Agile Security, uh, it's a complete overview of your security, or the, of your project, during every step of the development. Okay. It provides uh, an additional security pipeline for you to uh, check every security uh, need for your project, and then uh, you can integrate it with your own pipelines. Okay, so you have your uh, continuous integration pipeline, and then on one point of that, you call Chimera, Chimera checks your code, sees if everything is okay from a security point of view, and then says, okay, you can go, okay, mm -hmm, uh, this is bad, uh, come back and fix it. So, and for that, for that thing, it uses patterns defined using BDD. So from a functional point of, of view, we can check uh, out of the box your code, check if everything is okay, and then go, go ahead. And uh, also, uh, it integrates an additional third-party app to get a risk assessment from your project. So you're gonna go to, pro you wanna put your project into production and then you, uh, the, the application says, okay, for your application, you're gonna need a web, app web application firewall, a reverse proxy, uh, you have to change uh, this configuration or that configuration in one of your machines. Maybe uh, uh, you, don't, you don't want to log in using root in secure shell, or et cetera. And then we have all that from that, from that application. And then, okay, you have your project. You have development, and you want to go to production. Then, that's the second point of Chimera, which is called deploy provision and hardening. Deploy provision and hardening provides us with this risk assessment. We can check every step of every needed uh, from a security point of view, and do it for you. Okay, you need a web application firewall. Okay, we'll deploy it, we'll provision, configure it for your project, link it. Okay, you're good to go. You don't have to do anything. We do it for you. You have to change any configuration from your machines, from your servers. Okay, not pro no problem. We connect them, we log in, we change it, we fix it. We harden every machine from your project for you. You don't have to do anything. Using uh, security policies defined from our company, we do it everything. 
without having to change everything at hand or everything. Chimera do it with you. And then, okay, you have your project is secure. Uh, you, you can be 100% secure, but almost. You have uh, every, every piece needed. Okay, you are, you are in production. But you may need additional security services on your production life. Uh, maybe you need a new authentication, authorization, cryptography, etc., etc. Maybe additional secures. That was the third point of Chimera, what we call Cloud Security Foundation. Cloud uh, Chimera integrates additional security services for you with only one gateway. You're, so you have to integrate only with Chimera, and Chimera provides every services needed for you. So. You want authentication, you have it. You want a cryptography, you have it. Everything you need from a security point of view, additional to your project, as an additional service, you have it with Cloud Security Foundation. Even if we change one of our pro application providers from the inside, okay, uh, we found a new aut authentication application and has better features and it's better and all, all of that, we can change it from behind be, uh, and, and you don't have to change a line of code, okay? It's transparent for you. Chimera does all their work for you, and you have only to, to talk to Chimera, and Chimera does all the work. So that's what uh, we do to work with every step of the way on your development process. But what happens next of, after that? Okay, so with... With all this stuff about the cloud and continuous delivery, continuous integration, another situation arises where you might not know where your servers are, and I mean not physically because they're in the cloud in this magical place where everything just works, but uh, we mean virtually. You, you, have to, um, you have to know exactly what do you have and and where you have it, what's visible to the outside, and what's not, because if you don't, uh, if they're vulnerable, you won't know. Uh, you might not know where to fix it. You might not know exactly what you have. So, um, so you have to keep a, a good um, inventory of all that stuff. Do you, maybe you have a team of people that whose purpose is to keep on keep up with the news of vulnerabilities maybe they manually check all your servers but that's boring and it's very inefficient so we created another app it's called bats um, and the first issue we tackled with bats was that as a bank we have many regulations um, imposing very strict uh, restrictions to ensure that your data is safe uh, and the way we do this, VATS allows you to create security policies which um, and helps you enforce them by snitching on all the, all the servers that don't follow the norm. But, you know, if, if you follow a, a set of rules and policies, that doesn't really m mean that you're secure because maybe you're vulnerable. Uh, new vulnerabilities and other threats are being discovered all the time and that's not going to stop anytime soon. So you, might, you, you have to prioritize your work because not all vulnerabilities are as critical as others. Not all your servers that are vulnerable are open to the outside and exploitable. And if you give a list of 500 vulnerabilities to your ops team, they're going to say, what, the hell, what, what am I supposed to do with this? So um, that's when having a real-time inventory of your, of your servers comes in really handy. But keeping tabs on all your infrastructure is not really easy, especially in, like in our case, if you have many different data centers, maybe many different cloud providers, um, so one, uh, one approach to solve this is having a department of people whose job is to make sure that everything goes to them. They're the one that creates machines. They're the one that, that updates their inventory. But that really stumps agility. It makes people not have the, 
the freedom they need, the, I want to create a new server. Wait, we have to wait a week because the ops teams have to create the machine, they have to secure it, and such and such. So we created what we call an agent. It runs on every single machine that's deployed, it comes pre-installed, and it keeps it reports to the server to um, keep track of all the machines that are alive and reports the, um, the different vulnerabilities and problems that may, might appear in the future. But you might be wondering, why are we telling you about all this stuff? Why, what do you care about Chimera? What do you care about bats? So the thing is, it's completely done with Python. We, we made both of them with Python. And here's a small list of the, of the different um, technologies we use. We use a bit of Python to 7, but we started a, a long time ago, but it's mostly Python 3.5 and Django and, and Tornado. Okay. Uh, mainly uh, Chimera is uh, done everything with Python 3.5 and Tornado and uses MongoDB and Theory so, uh, as a data store and a job scheduler. And Bats is using uh, Python 3.5 uh, with uh, some points in 2.7, mainly Django, some parts of Tornado, MariaDB, MongoDB, Celery, every, a, a lot of things. And also, we don't have only these technologies, okay? We have a lot of them working only for those two applications. You can see uh, PyOpenSSL, PyCrypto, uh, PyWin32, okay? We do uh, Windows services for, those, for this agent and it's a real pain to work with Windows. So um, a lot of them, both of three to connect with Amazon Web Services, uh, RabbitMQ, Redis, Sentry, LK, and Map, Obscap, and Civil, a lot of it. Um, we are only this for two, two applications. We have a lot of more applications coming out, not only of Python, it's a, a lot of languages. So uh, this is a, a, just a tip of, of everything we do it. So thank you everyone for coming in, and if you have, have any questions, uh, we are here to talk. Okay. Hi. Hello. So thanks for your presentation. <clears throat> um, can you go please one slide back? Yes. Okay, so what are you doing here? Uh, I mean, it seems like you are just collecting uh, uh, technology stack. Is there any reason you would use, for example, uh, nano uh, messengers, messenger with uh, RabbitMQ and so on? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's um, I mean, here we're talking about uh, both applications. Okay, it's not really the same. Uh, Nano message we use it for internal communications, and Rabbit we use it for job queuing with Celery. And so, yeah, it's just two different parts of the of the application. And Nano message was really the it was much easier to use for the the specific case than Rabbit. So that's pretty much it. Okay, thanks. So I find one of the interesting challenges that you have when you have a really big stack yourself, and you seem to have it, yes. uh, especially in the, in the light of you providing a security relevant application, is how do you make sure that what you're using is actually secure? Because the more dependencies you have, basically the um, the amount of potential vulnerabilities explodes exponentially. Yes. So uh, you're asking, well, how do we make how sure? How do you that keep up to date? Oh yeah. Well, basically, we <laughs> I don't know how to say. Uh, we we check every all the time the vulnerabilities, and if s some of our our dependencies is is vulnerable, we search for a different option, or or we try to patch it ourselves. I don't know if that answers your question or... Uh, yeah, I don't know. For, um, maybe I, I come from 
Maybe my, my question more has to do with, with my own frustration with how hard it is. Because sure, you can go to every website, like check for news or uh, security disclosures, maybe browse the CVs. But um, the problem that I, that I see in the Python ecosphere, there's not really a, a service that does it for you. I know from the Node.js world, there are actually uh, these SaaS out there that basically scan your uh, package requirements, and they mm -hmm. tell you, okay, you've got a vulnerab vulnerability right there. So you basically have people that dedicate all their time to staying up to date. So I was, I, I was actually wondering whether you know any service like that. Well, actually, that's what we do. So, uh, okay. what 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 we do is precisely check everything, uh, every new vulnerability that comes out. We, we, we are updated with uh, vulnerability services, and if a new vulnerability comes out, we know it because that's precisely what our application is made for. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, uh, our applications are used using, use, uh, during our development. So we check every, every vulnerability using bots, we deploy our own application using Chimera, and uh, on every step of our own uh, internal continuity, uh, continuous integration process, we check uh, the last version of every dependency, we check if, if any vulnerability is available for that, and then when everything is okay, it's implemented uh, already in the new package or the new version of every application. So we have everything mm, almost under control, and, that, and that's cast. Because if uh, we develop it from the bank for, but also we use it, it internally. Hi. So uh, I was wondering if, uh, since you're uh, focused on security, what uh, good patterns are you using internally to make sure that there aren't uh, some funny stuff going on, like do you have a policy where you have to always use context managers uh, which handle various resources or uh, how do you manage things like that and um, how are you then reviewing code? I mean, if somebody has for some feature connect to, let's say, RabbitMQ or something like that, um, do you have some automatic procedure that checks that all the resources were closed and uh, how do you manage memory leaks and or resources leaks? I'm, I'm not really sure I understood you. Um, your question is how uh, if we have uh, internal guiding styles and people who who check our code in case we... Okay, so I imagine you have some internal guides. Yes. But my question is now, how do you enforce them? Do you have like uh, pull requests, code reviews? Yes, or yes, we have pull requests, code reviews. Uh, nothing goes into production or anything if it hasn't been checked by the people who development and the security team inside our company and... Okay, but could you talk uh, a bit more about uh, good practices, uh, especially related to Python? For example, I mentioned context managers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, good practices, S some of them are, I mean, use SSL, uh, context managers are a good idea, but not every, not, not, Everything you use uh, has context managers, so maybe you can do them for that. For you can do them for yourself if you if you require it. I mean, just basically uh, code properly, uh, do profiling of your application. Um, I don't know. Is that answer your question. Uh, one simple question. Um, uh, what tools do you use for code reviewing the pools? For code review? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, for code reviewing, uh, we, fa we have, uh, uh, in one side, we use uh, GitHub as our mainly co uh, code repository. Then, then we have uh, a complete uh, branching system with pull requests, code review from uh, more than two people, but also uh, 
uh, in the first point of Chimera, in Agile Security, we have a, a complete stack for code reviewing, called, we call internally EGL. It's, uh, it's a piece uh, composed with Jenkins, Sonacube, and also all, uh, additional tools for making code review. So even if we pass from the project pull request from GitHub, we also check it with Chimera internally using our own co uh, code review stack. No, pero 45 es el banco. The code review uh, uh, part. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, first, there is a there is a part that is automatically, okay, doing uh, with uh, pattern checks. But uh, you can also do it uh, manually with per a, pe a person or a team of people. So, actually, internally we have when we in the pull request we check it with people manually. We also have uh, automatically, and we also use technologies like Sonar and static uh, checkers for our code. Um, I have the. It's not a question. It's an answer for. For his, um, there is a service that is called gymnasium.com that is usually a, it takes a, it search for vulnerabilities on gems uh, for Ruby projects, but it's it that now they also support uh, Python projects. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have a simple question. Does Chimera support our uh, handles, incident response, and things like that? Excuse me? Uh, uh, does Chimera support incident response? Uh, Chimera uh, mainly focuses uh, just on monitorization and backup, but does not uh, check for incident response at the, at the time. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? No, thank you guys for the presentation. Thank you.